Okay, hi guys, how's it going? I am back, kind of. Uh, so if you don't follow my socials, you wouldn't know, but my computer died uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, I think it was the power supply. I'm not really sure, to be honest, um, but it's set me back a little bit in my progress. So um, last week I put out an old video that was on Skillshare called Building a Better Jump, uh, which is based on the GDC talk, Building a Better Jump. And um, it's really just taking those concepts from that GDC talk and uh, putting them into the Godot game engine, sort of breaking them down and how you can actually implement them in the Godot game engine. And I've got another one here today because I still haven't been able to make a video this last week, but I don't think that video did much justice on why you might actually want to do this. Um, and so I thought I'd just take that time to do that now. So for me, at least when I'm designing a platformer in the past, it's been pretty hard before I knew about this to be able to define uh, you know, the distance that you can jump, how high you can jump, and you sort of like guessing and checking, going backwards and forth on those variables and trying to figure those things out. And it can be a little bit difficult and it slows you down a lot, especially in game jams. And so these concepts, they speed that up. And the way that I've implemented them at least um, allow you to exactly define in pixels you know, how far your, your character can jump, how high your character can jump, so that you know that that when you go to design your level, you can make sure that the tiles are only going to be 192 pixels apart, 64 pixels apart, however far you want them to be. Do you want them to be one tile, two tile? So that when you come to your level design, you know exactly what to do and it allows you to create more compact, more tightly defined levels that are going to be more fun for people to play. Um, and so with that said, um, here's that video and I hope you enjoy. All right, thanks. Okay, welcome back. Now that we have control over our jump height and the time we spend in the air, there's a few different directions we can go in for our jump distance. So we know how high we're going to jump and we know how long we're going to spend in the air. And I was hinting earlier in the last video that we were able to calculate the jump distance with our calculator and set the time to jump peak accordingly to get the desired distance that we wanted to jump. But what if we coded that programmatically so that it was set at runtime? At the moment, we're setting the max speed at to 500 and using the time to jump peak to control the distance that we jump. What we can actually do is take away the set value for max speed and calculate that the same way that we have with jump speed and gravity. So why would we want to do that? It can be used to calculate the movement speed of the player controller and allows the designer to exactly define the maximum distance a player can jump. So at the moment we had to work it out in a kind of haphazard way where we had to do some mental maths or break out a calculator to, to, to set the time to jump peak. That does work and it's fine but it might be better to do it programmatically. We can play around with these things more and when we're designing our game, we can actually use it to uh, have a bit more control over the distances that we're gonna place in front of our player and know what's possible and what's not. Okay, so we do that with the velocity equation, which is distance over time. It's a little bit easier than the other ones that we've been looking at. We can substitute in our variables so it would look like this, move speed is equal to jump distance divided by two times time to jump peak. It has to be two times the time to jump peak because the time to jump peak is half of the time that we spend in the air. So let's jump into Godot and implement these new functions. Okay, here we are back over at our scene and we've got our player. We're going to jump into the script here. Okay, we've got our constant max speed is equal to 500. What well, the first thing we're going to need to do is change this to a variable and remove the amount and set the type. The next thing we need to do is create a new variable. We'll export it so that we can have control in the editor. Make it an int. Go variable jump distance. And I think we had this calculating to, I think it's 
just based on the time to jump peak. So we'll go with 192. Okay. Now we just need to implement the formula that we talked about earlier. So that's max speed is equal to jump distance divided by and we'll put this in brackets just so we don't get confused two times time to jump peak okay and while we're here why don't we just print that out to see what our max speed comes out at Okay, and we're exactly on the money. It's 500. Awesome. Okay, so now we can play around with things. Uh, maybe we want our time to jump peak to be a little longer. Take 4.4.25 maybe. We don't have to worry about the effects. We'll just move probably a little bit faster or slower depending on what we decide. We want this to be 128. I can do that. Look at that. Now we have very high jump, nice smooth movement. What do we calculate? We're a bit slower now. 384. How good's that? Okay, and that's all there is to it, really. It's really quite simple once you've implemented some of these more complicated formulas to move it around. You don't necessarily have to um, use this formula. I like to because it gives you very clear boundaries when you're designing your levels in a platformer. It's nice to know exactly what the player can and can't do. And so we're pretty much exactly defined almost all the things that our player is doing at the moment. And so when we go to make the map, we know exactly where to put the blocks, and how tall we can make them, how wide we can make them, uh, so we become a lot more efficient and the levels become better because of that. Alright, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next lesson.